Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, where we are taking a look at an HK4 pistol and its complete set of bits and parts and accessories. So this was the first pistol produced by H&K. Uh, to give you a little bit of background on the company, they were formed in 1948 or 1949, shortly after the end of World War II. Um, it was Heckler and Koch and a guy named, named Alex Seidel, who was also a very important partner. And at first this was just kind of an industrial production company. They made sewing machines, they made bicycles, they made appliances, they made machinery. Um, Certainly right after World War II, German companies weren't allowed to manufacture firearms. Well, that started to change, and through a series of events that are outside the scope of this video, HK ended up uh, being chosen as the one of the primary manufacturers of the G3 rifle for the German military. So that got them heavily into the arms business. And in 19, that was in uh, like 1957 or 58, they started production of the G3. Uh, after a few years they decided that they wanted to expand and move into other areas of firearms production. So their first pistol was this. Uh, the project began in 1966 and it was developed by Seidel primarily um, and kind of loosely based on the Mauser HSC. Um, all the founders of HK were former Mauser employees. Seidel knew the HSC pretty well and um, so used it as the, the basis or the inspiration for this. Now these went into production in 1968, uh, or were released for sale in 1968, and the name HK4 comes from the fact that it was available in four different calibers. Both you could buy the pistol in any one of these calibers, but you could also get, oops, get what we have here, which is a complete boxed set of one pistol with conversion kits for all four calibers, those being 22 rimfire, 25 ACP, 32 ACP, and 380. So how do you get one pistol to work in all those calibers? Let me go ahead and show you. So let me open up our case here. Here is the basic pistol. We'll start with that. This is a simple blowback pistol. Uh, it does have a double action trigger. The hammer here uh, is fully shrouded so that whether it's fired like this or cocked like that, you don't have an opening to let dirt into the gun. Uh, we do have a safety here on the side, fire and safe. Uh, there is no decocker to it. As far as construction, uh, it actually uses a cast aluminum frame and a steel slide. I'll show you more about the slide's construction when we take it apart in a moment. Markings on the slide are the Model, F model HK4 made by H&K GmbH in Oberndorf am um, Neckar, Germany, uh, commercial proof mark, and then we have a serial number here on the bottom of the frame. And of course a little HK logo on the left side of the grip panels. It uses a heel type magazine release, kind of typical of European pistols at the time, and you'll notice of course the magazines are marked with their caliber. So this is 9 Kurtz or 380. A couple quick notes about function. This does have a magazine safety, so if the magazine is not fully inserted it will not fire. Uh, it does lock open when empty, but there is no slide release control. So if you want to close the slide there are two ways to do it. One of them is to insert a new magazine. That will close the slide. Or if you want to do it without having a magazine, you can actually use the trigger, which will also close the slide. Now you may have noticed the H&R logo in here. Uh, before the creation of HK USA, HK products were imported into the US by a variety of other companies. Harrington and Richardson did the import for the HK4s. Now if we look at the set of spare barrels here, um, we've got four magazines, three barrels, because presumably one of the barrels is in the pistol all the time. Uh, and they're all basically the same except for spring weight. So each barrel is marked with its caliber, and then there is a matching marking on the magazine. Capacity of these, by the way, is eight rounds in every caliber except the 380 or 9 Kurtz, which is a larger diameter cartridge and only holds seven. So how do you go about changing caliber? Well first you have to disassemble the pistol, which is done by of course checking it, making sure the hammer is cocked, and then we have a little rotating latch here. So if you hold the slide with one hand, pull this latch all the way down, 
you can then pull the slide forward just about a quarter inch and lift it off the frame. We can take a quick look at the frame here while we're in there. That latch is just a little lug here that locks into the barrel and prevents the slide from going forward. There is a polymer buffer in the front of the frame. That's important because uh, since the slide weight does not change for any of the different calibers, you know that some of them are going to impact harder than they ought to. And so that's there for that purpose. We then have our trigger mechanism, which I have to insert a magazine to be able to demonstrate uh, this down a little slowly. So there's your hammer right here. That is going to hit the firing pin right there at the back of the slide. We can finish disassembling this by pulling the barrel forward and then down out of the slide. So this is our 380 or 9K barrel. So to change calibers between the center fire rounds, the 25, 32, and 380, all I have to do is take a new barrel, whichever I want. This is the 7.65 millimeter barrel, and slide it in there, drop it all the way in. The extractor is spring tensioned and uh, will go to the proper depth regardless. That's it. Then I put the slide back on, change to the 7.65 caliber magazine, and I'm good to go. But I hear you saying, what about the 22? You can't use a center fire firing pin for a 22. Well, you are correct. And so they have a removable breech face here, which I notice now has actually been set up wrong. So I'm going to take this apart anyway to show you how to, how to do it. And in the process, we'll go ahead and fix this. You'll notice there are two firing pin holes here, a center fire one and a rim fire one. This is currently set up for center fire. You can see that letter Z, that is for center fire. In order to change it, I have to take this screw out. Conveniently, they have provided a screwdriver in the form of the cleaning rod. So you have a patch, a slot for a patch, and a screwdriver tip. Now before I can actually use that screwdriver, I have to take the extractor out of the way. And the way you do this is to pull it all the way out, and you see there's a little hole in there. You then take a pin, like a sewing pin or a paper clip, this is actually what the manual says, and slide it into that hole, and that will hold the extractor out of the gun. Now I can take my cleaning rod screwdriver, thread it into here, and take off this screw. This is a really long screw and it's really finicky to take off with this stupid cleaning rod, so we're going to skip to the part where I have it all the way removed. Alright, the screw is all the way out now and I can pull out There we go, this breech face. So we have this side marked Z for center fire, and we have this side marked R, under a little bit of oil, there it is, marked R for rim fire. Now you'll notice that the rim fire side doesn't appear to fit, because there's a cutout here for the head of the screw and there's not on this side. That is actually deliberate to set the geometry of the bolt face correct. And the 22 caliber barrel has a little recess cut in it for that screw head. So it does, in fact, work. So in addition to flipping the breech face around, uh, you also have to then take the firing pin and set it to the correct firing pin hole in the breech face. This firing pin uh, pivots slightly. And so I want it in the top hole for rim fire and in the bottom hole for center fire. Now I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this in the center fire configuration. So we'll pull that out, put it in that side, and then set the firing pin down there in the bottom. This is again pretty finicky to put together here. Uh, there we go. Now you can see the firing pin is in the center fire hole, and I can go ahead and hold this in place, thread that screw back in, and then the gun will be ready to uh, put the barrel into and fire. Whew, and there we go. Now I just have to take the pin out here. I'm going to hold the extractor out so I don't scratch it, and there we are. 
I did mention that I was going to give you a little more detail on the slide construction. We think of HK as a company that specialized in uh, stamped machining, and that actually holds true here. So this slide started as a flat piece of thin steel that was bent into a U-shape, and then the reinforcing at the muzzle and the breech block uh, were added and then fixed in place. So simply by having that little polymer buffer block in there and adjusting the tent the weight of the recoil springs, HK was able to make this a reliable pistol in all four different calibers. Uh, they did initially include chamber fluting on the 380 and the 22 barrels to help with extraction, but that was deemed uh, not really actually necessary, and later in production they went ahead and dropped it. Production would go until 1984, so a total of 16 years that this was actually in production. Uh, it wasn't a commercial failure by any means, but it certainly wasn't as much of a success as HK probably would have liked. They made a total of 38,200 of them, including one particularly large sale of 12,400 in 32 caliber to the German customs police. That certainly helped. Um, but overall, the HK-4 was just never really able to to uh, effectively compete with guns like the Walther PPK. And I think part of that is actually the fact that it was available with all these conversion kits. Uh, people always seem to like the idea of caliber converted guns or convertible guns, but I think when it actually comes down to making a purchase, most people pick the caliber that makes most sense for whatever it is that they want to do with the gun, and they just want to buy a pistol in that caliber, or rifle in that caliber, and the idea of being able to swap between, say, 25 and 32 caliber doesn't really bring you any benefit given that it's the same basic pistol frame. You know, you could see the benefit of, say, 25 if it's a smaller gun, something like that. But it's all the same pistol, it's just changing what caliber it shoots. The one perhaps that makes the most sense would be 22 rimfire to be able to use particularly low cost ammunition for practice, but at any rate, um, HK did a good job on the pistols. 16 years of production and 38,000 made is nothing to scoff at. And especially in complete sets like this, today they're really cool collector's pieces. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you'd like to know more about Rock Island, you can follow them on their YouTube channel or their Instagram page, both of which are linked below in the description text. Thanks for watching.